tardes, donde quiera que se encuentren. Bienvenidos nuevamente a Primera Línea, la conexión de la información. Hoy vamos a tener una conversación con el alcalde de la ciudad de Nueva York, señor Eric Adams. Our best, Mr. Mayor, thank you for the opportunity to be in Primera Línea. Uh, And uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, the situation in Latin America is no, it doesn't seem to get any better. And you will see a lot more, or more uh, migrants coming into the city. What is the city of New York, the most important city in the world, doing to confront this situation? Well, I think uh, number one, leading uh, by examples. Uh, you know, it's one thing to talk about being the land of the free, the home of the brave, and have the Statue of Liberty sit in our harbor, but all of a sudden turn back people who are pursuing the American dream. It is, when you think about it, uh, the most anti-American thing that could happen to an individual is to not have the right to vote. That is, there's nothing more anti-American than that. Every group that has arrived at these, sh these shores, uh, no matter how hard it was, if it meant uh, being a tailor for 50 cents a garment, if it means shining shoes, washing dishes, waiting on tables, They saw that I would start here and ascend to somewhere else. When you take yeah. away that right to work, you're taking away the precursor to sleep that allows you to experience the American dream. And that's what we're doing. And I really, I'm trying to have other Americans wrap their heads around what it is to be treated in an undignified way that you can't work. We have every, Asylum seeker, when I slept in the hurt with my asylum seekers, brothers and sisters, when I meet them on the street, they say, we don't want your food. We don't want you washing our clothing. We don't want you doing anything for us. We just want to work. And so we have had a multiple front. Number one, we have been fighting Washington, D.C. to say, let's expedite the permits. Let's give people the right to work and let's fund this federal issue by using federal dollars. And we're going to continue to do that. But while they're responding, we have been doing what no other municipality is doing. We have been housing people, educating every child. Now, one child is going without education. Uh, we have been making sure that we're treating the asylum seekers with the same level of dignity that our ancestors were treated who came to this uh, city in, in this country. And it has been a Herculean task, 87,000 people uh, who we are now taking care of. It's a, it's a real lift on the taxpayers. It's a lift and it is unfair to the asylum seekers uh, that we have to move them to different locations, but we are doing the best we can with an unbelievable group of people who have been not only working their normal hours, But the number of volunteers that are coming from city agencies is just remarkable. Yes, yes, I've seen that. I've, I've spoken to several of the NGO organizations that are helping and working with you and with your office. Uh, what do you expect these migrants that are coming into the city to do? I mean, they, most of them are looking for the American dream, that's for sure. But I always remember the phrase of uh, Mr. Kennedy, President Kennedy, know what you can do, what the country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Now, this has become our country. We are building, trying to, helping the society. What do you expect these migrants that are coming to do for your country, for your city, for our city? Uh, uh, there, there is so much that they can, that they can do. Uh, it's just unbelievable when you think about it. Uh, uh, think about this for a moment. We are in dire need of workers. <laughs> You know, we in dire need. And we all know this route. This route is not new to any of us. Uh, first arrivals come in and they're willing to do jobs that other people are not willing to do it. I don't care if it's a deliveristas who came in to deliver food to those and now they are making a suitable wage because of the agreement that we fought for. Uh, you know, even if you look at someone like yourself, you're starting a paper, your paper is probably going to become one of the largest readers in the Venezuelan community, you know, so the contributions oh, really? that they can make. And you know what's interesting about this group of migrants and asylum seekers of that are coming from Venezuela, many of them are professionals. 
they have been professionals in their own home, in their own homeland, and they want to come here and add to this community. And we, I have 12,000 governmental jobs right now that are looking to fill. All of my businesses are saying we need more people. And so this influx of migrant asylum seekers can help us in so many ways. You know the real tragedy? We can't even give them a stipend if they volunteer and do some of the services that we need done in the city. And so the, the, the system is built against them. But having a new group of, of, of migrants, immigrants, asylum seekers, really allows the country to continue to prosper. This is what the first Irish did for us, the first Italians, the first Caribbeans, uh, you know, the first Bangladeshis. All new arrivals, we re infuse not only economics in the country, but you know what else it re infuses? It re infuses patriotism. Yeah. You want to find yeah. some of the most patriotic people? Go to the asylum seekers, the migrants, the first generations. They love the country. And, and, and while longtime Americans have been moving away from the patriotism, the new arrivals have been moving in a different direction. We are coming here for a new hope and um, this society, this new city, I mean, it's welcome us with like, like family. That's what we have experienced. One question, Mr. Mayor, what do you think the mayor of New York has to do? What else do you need to do for the city? It's very Go clear ahead. for me, very, it's very clear for me. I have not vacillated um, from what I believe I need to do as mayor. I've been very clear. Number one, Public safety is a prerequisite to prosperity. We must be a safe and just system. And we're doing that. Uh, do you do you know that when someone says what mayor is probably the most successful mayor and, and making the city safe, the first name that people think of is Giuliani. That's the first name. But do you know if you compare this year, January to June, and compare it to Giuliani's last year in office, do you know? We are almost 40% less crime than when he was in office. I am living out my promise and commitment of making our city safe. And our city is getting safer every day, decreasing homicides, shootings, um, some of the seven major crimes in our city. So safety is number one. But then I need to make sure our city stops betraying everyday New Yorkers. And what do I mean by those betrayals? There's a covenant between the people of this city and government. The covenant is you pay your tax dollars, we give you back your tax dollars with the delivery of goods and services. We have not been delivering those goods and services. Our streets are not clean like they should be, overrun by rodents. We are seeing our children not being educated at the levels that they ought to be educated. Our young people should have employments and paid internships and opportunities. Foster care children should get the support that they're doing like we're doing with paying their college tuition. Our English as a second language should have the right translation services so that they can get the services for their family. And so my job as mayor is to make sure that covenant is renewed. You pay your taxes, I'm going to make sure the goods and services that you deserve reaches the same level of commitment you have in paying your taxes. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, one last question. Can you address something to the Latino community in Spanish? Can you say something to the Primera Linea readers, something in Spanish? <laughs> yes. <laughs> mi, mi casa su casa. Uh, this city <laughs> belongs to us. Uh, what is mine is theirs, and I truly believe that. Of uh, the love affair I have, all I can say is, you know, uh, 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 mucho, 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 uh, uh, gracias, gracias for all that they've done. Yeah, well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I know it's a big responsibility. Your triumph is our triumph. So good luck for you, and it's a luck for you, for us. Thank all, you. For us all. Thank you very much for your opportunity. All right. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Take care. Take care. Thank you. Muchísimas gracias por haber estado con nosotros en Primera Línea de la Colección de la Información. Será hasta una próxima oportunidad.